Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and are always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Ava. Welcome to What You Next podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Ava. I'm the author of The Wolf and the Woodsman and a couple other forthcoming books. Um, I have a degree in political science from Columbia. That's one of the big things that influences my writing that influenced this particular book. Um, and I currently live in Palo Alto, which is kind of the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love this. So what inspired you to write The Wolf and the Woodsman? You mentioned something about political science, so there's some political mm-hmm. intrigue and stuff like that, but what was the source yeah. of inspiration and what led you to write this book? So yeah, it was actually, I was on one of those like Wikipedia, like rabbit hole deep dives, um, and I was reading about um, Hungarian history and like the Middle Ages, um, and I was reading about St. Stephen, who is kind of the first Christian king of Hungary, um, considered the founder of the modern state of Hungary. And he was actually born a pagan, and then he converted to Christianity later in life. And there is this one anecdote about him. Um, both of his sons died before they came of age. Uh, so his heir was this cousin. and But this cousin of his was still pagan, so he had his cousin's eyes stabbed out. Um, because he didn't want a pagan to inherit the throne. And if you've read the book, you'll like immediately understand how this was like an inspiration. Um, And it was like that one sentence that was like, that was like the germ of the idea. And then it spread into so many different things. And like, I wanted to talk about kind of nationalism and nation building um, because it's just something you don't see a ton of in fantasy. You kind of see these nations that are already established, but you don't see you know, the very fraught and violent process of them actually coming to be. So what was the process of crafting a fantasy book? Because I feel like that's like a whole piece of itself because you're world building, you're creating a story, you have a plot, you have characters, but the world building is a big part. And especially if you're creating a nation, that's like a big world building. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was, I mean, honestly, that part came really naturally to me because it was so inspired by history. Um, And one of the big things I wanted to do was like include voices and peoples that aren't usually represented in fantasy. So like Jewish people and just, you know, I wanted the state to have a kind of realistic diversity because there's never really been an actual homogenous state, even though they show up a lot in fantasy. So, you know, I wanted to make sure to include those like ethnic minorities, those religious minorities, and for them to really be like an important part of the fabric of the world and the story. Um, And, you know, these groups actually existed in history. Um, So that part came pretty naturally. um, And I really wanted to write about that. Um, Yeah, and just trying to represent, you know, these groups and the diversity of this burgeoning state. For those who haven't read the book, what is the elevator pitch and why we should pick it up? Uh, My elevator pitch is that it is an adult epic fantasy debut, kind of literary meaning, very political, um, inspired by Hungarian history, um, Jewish mythology. It has an enemies to lovers romance that's pretty central to the book. Um, It also has lots of body horror and gore if you're into that. and a lot, a lot of religious angst. So if you're into like the relationship between Fleabag and Hot Priest, then this is like definitely the book for you. I love this. You had me a Fleabag. Yeah. (laughs) Like, and not that I'm as clever or funny as T.B. Waller-Bridge, but if you're into that like dynamic, then yeah. I love this. So what kind of books do you you tend to read? Do you tend to read fantasy, romance? fiction John fiction um I think I read a pretty like diverse uh, number of books I mean I mainly read fantasy but I'm also super interested in like literary fiction that kind of bridges the gap between literary and genre fiction so like Kelly Link is one of my favorite authors ever Karen Russell Carmen Maria Machado Alice Sola Kim people like that are 
probably actually my biggest inspiration. Um, and like The Wolf in the Woodsman is the most solidly, you know, fantasy solidly genre fiction book I've ever written. Like my future contracted books are more kind of bridging that gap between literary and speculative, but definitely read plenty of fantasy. There's been so many great, great fantasy books out this year. Um, so you have suggestions for fantasy books for people who are like interested in diving into it and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed by the choices or yeah. where to find them, you know? Yes. So if you want like fantasy that's heavily romantic with this kind of enemies to lovers vibe, then definitely check out Down Comes the Night by Alison Saft. It's YA, but it's kind of upper YA. It's very dark. It has one of my favorite romances of all time. Um, also, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan has it like Shelley is like the new like vanguard of fantasy. I swear, like they this book is so incredible. It's comp to the Song of Achilles, which is a comparison it absolutely deserves. And I don't say that lightly because that's one of my favorite books. Um, has one of my favorite characters I've ever read, General Young. Um, also, uh, The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I love, love, love that book so much. It's just everything that I want from like a sweeping epic fantasy. Um, it's just incredible. So those are my recs for 2021 fantasy that I've read so far. I'm really excited for the upcoming books too. Oh my gosh, I love these recs. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband in the process of writing in the pandemic and debuting and so much, we're almost in the pandemic. We're up we're in mm -hmm. a weird, weird transition. Yeah. And um, what has been that process for you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I have found writing in the pandemic to be pretty easy just because there's fewer distractions. Yeah. Um, I'm one of those people who just like goes into my little world and then like I just get stuff done and I'm pretty productive and I draft pretty quickly. So it actually hasn't been too much of a struggle to draft. I drafted two books during the pandemic, um, both of which are contracted now. Um, but debuting during the pandemic was definitely hard. I remember at the beginning, I was like, oh my God, this is this is it for me. Like my book is like, this is done. Anything that's like gonna come out during the pandemic is just like, you know, dead on arrival. Um, but that's not true. And it's been really nice to, you know, see kind of, online events developing and like I had my launch with Rebecca Kwong and Alex Harrow who are two of my favorite writers and that's definitely not something I would have probably been able to do um, if it hadn't been for how much stuff has gone virtual so I think it's like definitely been a different experience than I expected but overall it's not as bad as my worst fears you know could have anticipated. Yeah, I think it's something, it, the pandemic pushed us to look at, you know, for when it comes to virtual events, like to look at opportunities for audience to look for events to, that they normally wouldn't be able to go because mm -hmm. it's far away or it's just like you have to travel. And so that's been kind of like me to discover new authors to do that. And also the role of social media has taken, you know, there it's more present, like mm -hmm. a book selling, you know, <laughs> like yeah. trying to like, share the books and be like, <laughs> gotta read this and like how it spread, you know. So yeah. yeah. I you know, I miss book events. I miss mm -hmm. like, you know, <laughs> going to the bookstore and like discovering. Yeah. Your I know. I remember the last event I went to before it like right before restrictions came in place in California was a launch for Adeline Grace's uh, All the Stars and Teeth. Um, and it was really, really fun event. But it was like literally two days after that, that they were like, all right, no one in California can do yeah. anything anymore. Like, I was like, well, all right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what kind of things do you do for self-care that just keeps you sane? Uh, I'm the worst person to ask this question too. Um, I have terrible coping mechanisms. Um, I got really into watching like video game let's plays over the past year because it's like the per like there's no narrative to them, so it's like the perfect thing to just kind of like zone out to and like melt your brain. Whereas like even paying attention to a TV show with like a narrative is like sometimes too much for me. Like as an author, especially because I like have my own narratives in my brain. And I'm like, I can't pay attention to somebody else's. Um, 
running like I got really into running ironically during the pandemic um just because I was like well there's nothing else to do um and no reason to leave my house so you know get outside sometimes when the sky is an orange and there's a mountain near um <laughs> during California summer uh yeah but I don't have again like I'm the worst person to ask about this because I really don't have great advice I think it's all good like you you find your coping mechanisms that work for you you know that keep you sane. like you know even there they might not be the best ones that you may I think we shouldn't judge our coping mechanisms like I think that's like the main thing like this is to judge it like you know we just do this like I do things and I'm like or I watch the same show over and over just because I mm-hmm. like, yeah it's like I need that company <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like comforting <laughs> it's comforting it doesn't it's not great tv it's not even like the tv that it's not even the type of books that I look for mm-hmm. but it's just comforting like yeah in order for me is like <laughs> comfort zone like yeah I'll live for Olivia Benson tell me <laughs> what <you> yeah <laughs> so, so it's okay um let's see what was the process of like getting your book journey, like getting your book contracted, like getting it published? Um, it's interesting because I, it was very swift for The Wolf and the Woodsman, but for years before I queried books and had like no success and I was like very frustrated. And then I wrote this book very quickly. I wrote in about like a month, two months, which is actually now my typical drafting speed, but it was quick for me then when I was, you know, 22. Um, and then I applied to Pitch Wars and I got into Pitch Wars. And if you don't know what the program is, it's basically a program for aspiring um, authors and you submit your work and a mentor who's either an agented or published author will select you to work with and then you revise your book and then it's in like a showcase um, for agents to request. So I got into that program and I worked with my mentor, Isabella Banez, Um and then when the showcase came around i got a lot of requests and it just happened very quickly for me that Mm -hmm. i got an agent and then the book sold a couple weeks after that so that was like and that was completely unexpected for me after you know spending years and years of like writing and revising and getting rejected um but yeah i was i was shocked by how quick how quickly it went i was not expecting that at all um well, yeah that's, that's congratulations I know I know Thank it's you. like it's a long journey I don't think even mm-hmm. though it feels like an overnight success so yeah like, like it was like really easily but you had years of building your craft you had years yeah. of building kind of like the process of just writing you know <laughs> yeah yeah and like I definitely want to be clear that like there's pretty much no such thing as an actual overnight success like even those stories that get passed around that are like <laughs> so aspirational like wrote my first book and then it went to this giant auction like even those usually have years and years of work behind them um I don't think I've ever met like I don't think I've ever encountered anyone in this industry who doesn't have a history of like (laughs) at least scores of rejections you know Yeah, I think I and I've interviewed hundreds of authors and I would tell you like they all say the same thing. It's like it's like there are books in the drawer, they're never gonna see the light of day, mm-hmm. but they're the first book and they're like they're the inspiration to keep going. You yeah. Know? So like once you start writing, you keep writing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so there's reductions, there's a lot of like just a lot of forks in the road, a lot of like stump obstacles or just like mm-hmm. trying to overcome them. So Mm-hmm. Okay, so. yeah definitely um tell us where you can find you online uh so i'm definitely most active on instagram at avas read um i try to post there a lot i'm then that's another coping mechanism actually i've been like really obsessed with like curating my grid and like taking yeah. photos and stuff um and making graphics and my like side hustle is graphic design um so instagram has actually been really fun for me um, I'm not really on Twitter. I have a website, avasread.com. Um, not on TikTok or anything like that. So Instagram is definitely the main way to find me. Hey, awesome. Thank you, Ava, for being on the show. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. 
If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. Today's episode's partner is Libra FM. If you're an audiobook listener, then you should add Libra FM as your go-to source for paid audiobooks. Libra FM makes it possible for you to buy audiobooks to your local bookstore. Memberships start at $14.95, and they also have great sales for women's audiobooks each month for $3.99, thanks to the Kiss Club. To sign up for Libra FM, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com slash LibraFM. You will receive a free audiobook when you sign up for a monthly subscription. If you purchase a subscription through our link, you will be supporting the podcast at no cost to you. The What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.